Okay, so uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, my name is uh, Chamna. I am from uh, Cambodian as a news outlet based in Siem Reap and Phnom Penh, ma'am. So, uh, ma'am, my first question is that, um, you know, as the first uh, US aid administrator to Cambodia, visiting Cambodia, uh, for two days, uh, can you uh, give us like a brief activity that you have done and also you will do tomorrow? And uh, the second question is that, why do you choose Siem Reap? one of the cultural province of Cambodia to visit, ma'am. And also the third question, uh, I was informed that you will visit Prime Minister Hun Manai tomorrow. So what do you hope to communicate with the Prime Minister, ma'am? Um, that's a lot of questions. <laughs> uh, so let me start with why did I come to Siem Reap? Um, this is my uh, third trip to Siem Reap. Um, once a person has come to Siem Reap once, they always insist on coming back. <laughs> and any tourist who has come, uh, if they haven't come back, it is only because it is so far away. Uh, but for me, when I knew I was coming to Cambodia, I've had such beautiful connections with the people of this town in my previous visits, such rich conversations. And again, the privilege for me is now to come as USAID Administrator and to actually see the work that we have been doing as the United States, as the American people, with the Cambodian people, in communities, you know, in a manner that is, is not only advancing the US-Cambodian partnership, but touching real lives. And so just as the Cambodian people have touched me over the years, I felt I had to come back. and. Um, in terms of the content of the visit, uh, my visit follows on, of course, the visit of Secretary Austin, our Secretary of Defense. Um, we believe really strongly in the United States in what we call the three Ds, diplomacy, defense, and development. Because the three Ds reflect the needs in a way of, of all individuals, which is to be physically secure, to be free, uh, to express oneself and to live as one chooses and as one and, and to, to um, raise children in a manner where you can imagine them fulfilling their dreams. Uh, and then of course to develop economically. Yeah. And we think that a, you know, a, an enhanced security partnership of the kind uh, that Secretary Austin discussed with more exchanges and more familiarity between us, um, more diplomatic engagement, and these really significant development investments will uh, hopefully support those incredible Cambodians who are doing work to build a brighter Cambodia uh, for the next generation. And of course, young people are at the, at the heart of Cambodia's economic progress and will be at the heart of its progress in strengthening its institutions, its governance, the rule of law, et cetera. My visit will include, yes, a meeting uh, with the Prime Minister. I'm very uh, much looking forward to that. I already had the chance in January uh, of this year to meet with the Prime Minister in uh, Davos when he attended and I attended the World Economic Forum. Um, but of course now we have had uh, a chance over many more months uh, to work on um, shared challenges like strengthening global health security, to initiate new partnerships like the new partnership to combat lead poisoning. Um, and. I, I look forward to, to talking about what more can be done, recognizing that we all want to see Cambodia's economy continue to grow. He has been very specific, of course, about Cambodia, wanting Cambodia to become an upper middle income country by 2030. Uh, we as USAID want to understand how we can be catalytic uh, in supporting certain sectors um, and so hearing directly from him about his priorities now deeper into his tenure as Prime Minister will be very important. And of course, we recognize as well that non-governmental organizations, community-based organizations, civil society organizations, that those organizations who are in the community 
have such an important role to play as well in delivering services like we saw being delivered uh, in screening tuberculosis or in educating the community, but also in rooting out corruption and exposing those forces that get in the way of Cambodia's uh, economy reaching its full potential. And above all, the Cambodian people um, benefiting as much as they should from all that Cambodia uh, offers and all that young people are investing in that economy. So I will see the Prime Minister. I will, uh, of course, later today, I can't come to Siem Reap without seeing some of Angkor Wat. Um, I will uh, engage uh, with uh, individuals outside of government who are looking at uh, you know, what more can be done, again, to strengthen uh, freedom and governance and the rule of law in this country. Um, and you know, it, I, I'm really looking forward to learning. On every trip, I learn so much. And Cambodia has changed really so much since my last visit to this country, which was back in 2012. I, I even just driving around, I can see so many of the changes. Uh, but again, my privilege is to be here as USAID administrator and to talk to our incredible team about what more we can do. Uh, to accelerate the progress in support of Cambodian leaders inside and outside uh, ministries. Back to you. Okay, ma'am. Uh, also, my second question has two parts, um, of course. Um, <laughs> uh, now you're touring the uh, TB, you know, uh, let's say, progress, how to uh, eliminate them, how to make the system better. Uh, so. What what are the development that you see so far back then back there when you toured the, the you know the the mechanism and also what are the challenges that still remain that you know when you talk to the expert they say there are many challenges out there that needs to be done that is the first part of the question and the second part of the question can be cultural again because uh, I see doctors I see you know um, organization expert but at the same time they are working on health but they are not in the clinic they are not in the hospital they are in a, a pagoda which is a, a, a sanctuary for Cambodia a Buddhism for hundreds of years so when you see you know uh, expert modern expert modern equipment coming together with mm. old people in the sanctuary of you know, Cambodian religion, how do you make of the situation? Um, well, and this is really important, I think, to stress, what is so significant about what Cambodians are doing here is that they are coming to the people. They are bringing the equipment uh, to diagnose whether TB is present in a person uh, to a more central location than the people would otherwise be able to access. So normally this very sophisticated x-ray equipment and the computers that process the x-rays to diagnose whether somebody uh, is uh, likely to have TB, uh, these individuals and, and, and would have to go very, very far. and. What USAID, in partnership with the Cambodian Ministry of Health and with this non-governmental organization that has been uh, at the forefront, what we have done together is uh, come up with, with activities that are designed to move the diagnosis and ultimately the treatment closer to the people. And that is what you saw here is uh, a large group of individuals who were told that if you come to this place at this time, you won't have to drive miles and miles in order to get the x-rays. And so everyone here either had some symptom of TB or had someone in their family who had some symptom. So in their mind, they were worried, maybe would I? But maybe they weren't worried enough to drive so far. Or maybe they couldn't afford uh, a bus fare or you know, they didn't have a motorbike in order to be able to, to make it that far. And so among the people who are here, I'm sure, are people whose TB cases would have gone undetected if we had relied on the old way of doing things. And so this is really a partnership that looks at the data 
sees that a third of TB cases in Cambodia go undetected and said, we have to fix that. Uh, if Cambodia is to reach its goal of getting rid of TB by 2030, that is going to require detecting all the cases of TB so that TB then isn't spread in communities. And mobile clinics, mobile health workers, mobile screening is going to be a big part of that solution. And, you know, I think that when one um, seeks out meeting places, gathering places, uh, one looks, and, and here again, we as the United States and as USA, we defer entirely to the Cambodian Ministry of Health about where best uh, to situate these mobile screening, uh, this, this equipment. We, we may uh, invest the resources to purchase this equipment, but fundamentally when it comes to respecting Cambodian culture, we are the guests of the Cambodian people, we are the guests of the Cambodian government, and we take their lead and follow their guidance about how best uh, to, uh, again, meet people where they are likely to feel comfortable uh, traveling to and sitting for some time as they go through the different stages of, um, of diagnosis, you know, starting, of course, with, with the x-ray, but then if they are uh, deemed, if it is deemed possible that they have TB, going further, and then even waiting for a couple hours to get the formal diagnosis, then the counseling that is going to come. That is a long uh, afternoon. It's a lot to ask of particularly elderly uh, people who are among those who gathered. And so to do so in a manner that, that um, is culturally sensitive, uh, but that also allows the individuals who come uh, the comfort of not being out in the blazing sun uh, for the entire day. I, I'm assuming that is why this, this location was chosen. Uh, so my uh, a final question is not related to TB, or, but, but it's more like uh, related to your, let's say, uh, journalism career. So in Cambodia right now, a lot of young people are interested in journalism, uh, if not you know, the media subject. And also you said that you was uh, a former journalist working in many conflict zones, and now you are a diplomat, so it's uh, like a, a, a career transition. So just a message for young people in Cambodia. Uh, how does journalism help shape you know, a person's career in the future? I mean, after they do journalism, of course. Um, I think journalism um, is an incredibly important form of civic participation. Um, uh, all of you are bringing to your communities uh, news and facts and often vital information uh, that citizens need to learn. Um, for example, when journalists cover uh, a local happening like this in Siem Reap, that there was a gathering where people were able to get TB screening and diagnosis right here. Somebody reads that or they see that on the news and then they think to themselves, oh, I haven't been feeling that well. Maybe I will go and find uh, uh, a screening facility or I will ask someone if they know when next this kind of uh, gathering is going to happen, this kind of screening, mobile screening is going to be available. That's an example of uh, the kind of uh, good that a journalist can do for their community. Um, obviously, uh, they're also in, in countries where corruption has been an issue. Um, journalism can be extremely important in uh, also helping law enforcement know where corruption is happening so that it can be rooted out. The Cambodian government really wants to continue to grow the economy. Uh, all of us would like to see more American investment in Cambodia. Uh, journalists have a really vital role to play in shining a spotlight on the kinds of things that might need to change in order for that investment to come at a faster clip than it has up to this point. So, you know, I look back on my journalism career and I feel grateful 
that I had that chance to be a journalist. I feel grateful to have made some small contribution, I hope, through my journalism. But the other thing that young people should know as they think about their careers is if you're a curious person, journalism is incredible. Look at you, you've asked, that's your sixth question. You're clearly <laughs> a, very, a very curious person. But journalism is incredible because you just get to go around and ask questions, any question that comes into your mind. You can actually uh, earn a living asking questions and learning. And so you get to perform something that hopefully helps your community uh, uh, grow and progress, while also yourself satisfying uh, the kinds of questions that you've had maybe since you were uh, you know, a, small, a small child. So I think it's a great career. Uh, the more that Cambodia can strengthen its checks and balances, um, where it has more and more independent institutions, uh, that um, that will give investors confidence, and journalists uh, over time will become more and more independent, and will be a very important source of sunlight on all the developments in Cambodia, helping it progress into a more uh, stable and prosperous society.